With the introduction of Dr. Leslie Tompkins, a direct connection to Bruce's past is explored in a way not seen up until this point in the series. An annual stroll down memory lane is wrapped in an adventure that threatens some of Gotham's most vulnerable and the very place where Batman was born. After Roland Daggett fails to get approval to bulldoze Gotham's historic but infamous Park Row, aka Crime Alley, he sets in motion a plan to blow up the neighborhood and make it look like an accident. With many residents still living in the area, Daggett's plan puts them all in mortal danger. Regardless, the bombs are set to go off at 9pm, just as Daggett is speaking at the Gotham Better Business Council's yearly dinner. Meanwhile, Batman travels to Park Row for his annual meeting with Leslie Tompkins, an old friend of Bruce's parents. Leslie discovers Daggett's plan to destroy the whole area and is abducted. At the same time, Batman keeps getting distracted by multiple disturbances. He searches for his old friend and slowly learns more about Daggett's plot. With the time ticking closer to 9pm, Batman's efforts to save the old neighborhood may go up in smoke. Leslie Tompkins is a character I don't think it's talked about as much as she should be, excluding Gotham, I guess. But like Alfred, she's always been a parenting presence in Bruce's life. She even knows he's Batman, so the trust goes deep with their relationship. Tompkins brings a heavy presence with her whenever she pops up in an episode of this show. It's almost like a piece of Bruce's parents are still alive whenever we see her. You can tell by how Batman treats her that she's very important to him. Credit to Diana Muldar for giving her such a warm and caring voice. There's a scene where Batman breaks into Tompkins' apartment and looks for clues to where she might be. He picks up this scrapbook and flips through it. We get loads of deep, rich information over the next 20 seconds. We see who Leslie is as a community leader and how far back her relationship with Bruce goes. The music by Stuart Balcom across this whole episode is great, but right there, it becomes an even bigger part of the storytelling. Sometimes we don't need to speak to convey a feeling. Sometimes music like this says more than we ever could. Since this is our introduction to Leslie in this series, that short sequence tells us everything we need to know about her. On the night the Waynes were killed, she was the one who comforted Bruce. That picture is worth more than a thousand words, and we see it again at the end of the episode when Batman and Tompkins visit the very spot where Bruce's parents were gunned down. Good people lived here once. Good people still live in Crime Alley. The literal ticking time bomb that we're shown throughout this episode keeps things moving at an urgent pace. Come to think of it, there's a lot that happens in these 22 minutes. Batman has to put out several figurative fires while also searching for Leslie and trying to get to the bottom of Daggett's misdeeds. Those shorter segments where Batman has to save the day are also very exciting in their own right. With Daggett again escaping justice at the end of the episode, the finish here is bittersweet, just like Bruce's attachment to the Park Row neighborhood. I like how they focused on Batman directly helping the residents there, but also getting across that Crime Alley is never going to be what it was back in the days of Bruce's parents. Leslie would show up a few more times across the series, and whenever she did, we knew we were going to get a rare perspective on Bruce. I'm a big fan of appointment in Crime Alley, and there's definitely a bunch more I could say, but I think the work speaks for itself. This is a must-watch installment. And if you want to read the comic this episode is directly based on, check out Detective Comics number 457 from March of 1976. If you can track it down online, it's a good companion piece for this story. Now, make sure you come back and join me as we go mad next time on Batman.